Okay, Ajaxun Navitam Yenatas, my Sri Guru Venamaha. Nama on Vishnu Padai, Krishna Prestai, Bhutale, Shimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Kinamine. Namaste, Saraswati Devi Gaudavani Pachari Nami Vishesha Sunyavari Pastya Tiade Satarine. Pancha Kalpa to Rupas Chaki Pasindu Pay Bachaka Titanam Bhavani Bhu Vaishnavi Yamaha. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Dvaita Gadhar Sri Rasandora Bhakti Vinda. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Sri Nishimha Jai Nishimha Jai Jai Sri Nishimha Avadadesha Jaya Padma Mukha Padma Pringam Guram Virya Maha Vishnu Jualantam Sarvatom Mukham Nishringa Bishinam Badram Nitya Nityam Namamiyaham. Although we find that uh, this pastimes and activities centered around Lord Shringadev's appearance are all found in the seventh canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, we find a few verses spoken by Prahlad Maharaj <clears throat> in the fifth canto. And this is one of them, which is a very beautiful and very uh, direct prayer to the Supreme Personality of Godhead Sri Nishringadev himself. So we'll uh, begin. <clears throat> Om Namo Bhagavate Narasringhaya Namas Teja Tejase Avir Avir Bhava Vrajanaka Vrajadamstra Kamasayan Radaya Radaya Tamo Grasa Grasa Om Swaha Abhayam Abhayam Atmani Bhuyasta Om Shram I offer my respectful obeisances unto Lord Nishringadev, the source of all power. O Lord, who possesses nails and teeth, and like thunderbolts, kindly vanquish our demon-like desires, the fruit of activity in this material world. Appear in our hearts and drive away our ignorance, so that by your mercy, we may become fearless in the struggle for existence in this material world. I'll read it again. <clears throat> I offer my respectful obeisances unto Lord Nisimhadev, the source of all power, O oh my Lord, who possesses nails and teeth just like thunderbolts, kindly vanquish our demon-like desires for fruit of activity in this material world. Please appear in our hearts and drive away our ignorance so that by your mercy, we may become fearless in the struggle for existence in this material world. <coughs> Purport by His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada. And the Srimad Bhagavatam 4.22.39, Sanat Kumar speaks the following words to Pre Maharaj Pritam. Yad pada pankaja palas viyala Karma sayam grahitam ugraga tayanti shantaha Tadvam the Rikta Matayo Yatayo Pirudam Srota Ganas Tararanam Pajam Pajam Pasadevam. <clears throat> the devotees always engage in the service of the toes of the Lord's lotus feet, which can very easily become free. Devotees always engage in the service of the toes of the Lord's lotus feet <clears throat> can very easily become free from hard knotted desires for fruit of activities. Because this is very difficult, the non devotees, the jnanis, and the yogis cannot stop the waves of sense gratification, although they try to do so. Therefore, you are advised to engage in devotional service. Krishna, the son of Vasudev. 
every living being within this material world, excuse me for a minute, I might have to do something real quickly and I'll continue from this verse right here. Sorry for that interruption. Devotees always engage in the service of the toes of the Lord's lotus feet can very easily become freed from hard knotted desires for food and activities. Because this is very difficult, the non devotees, the jnanis, and the yogis cannot stop the waves of sense gratification, although they try to do so. Therefore, you advise to engage in devotional service of Krishna, the son of Vasudeva. Every living being within the material world has a strong desire to enjoy matter to his fullest satisfaction. For this purpose, purpose the conditioned soul must accept one body after another, and thus his strongly fixed fruit of desires continue. One cannot stop the reputation of birth and death without being completely desireless. Therefore, Srila Rupa Goswami describes pure bhakti, devotional service as follows. Aya bila sita sunyam jnana karmana nagutam anukulena krishna silanam bhaktir uttamam. One should render transcendental loving service to the Supreme Lord Krishna favorably and without desire for material profit or gain through fruit of activities or philosophical speculation, that is called pure devotional service. Unless one is completely freed from all material desires, which are caused by the dense darkness of ignorance, one cannot fully engage in the devotional service of the Lord. Therefore, we should always offer our prayers to Lord Nusringadev, who killed Narani Kashipu, the personification of material desire. 
Aranya means gold and Kashi pool means a soft cushion or bed. Materialist pers materialistic persons always desire to make the body comfortable. And for this, they require huge amounts of gold. Thus, you, Hirani Kashipu was the perfect representative of materialistic life. He was therefore the cause of a great disturbance to the topmost devotee, Pallad Maharaj, until Lord Nasimhadev killed him. Any devotee aspiring to be free from material desires should offer his respectful prayers to Lord Nasringadev as Pallad Maharaj did in this verse. So this verse spoken by Prahlad Maharaj is very significant and his beautiful prayers to Lord Nisringadev. When the child was being harassed by his father because he had become a devotee of the Lord, Prahlad Maharaj didn't give much concern for his own welfare. He simply was concerned about helping his father come to the understanding of what is the purpose of life and give up his demoniac activities, give up his demoniac mentalities. <laughs> Anything that goes against the will of the Lord or goes against the, the, uh, the uh, laws of God has, has indications of demoniac desires behind it. The word demon seems to be a strong word, but actually it means those who work against the will of the Lord or those who work against those who have dedicated their life to the will of the Lord. So desires are, in this verse, we can get a, a nice analogy. The desires are like demons, <laughs> material desires or desires for fruit of activity. Um, this is how the material world works. It works, in other words, not works, but it goes on simply by the desire of the living entities to gain something from their activities in this world. Either we do something with the hope of gaining something from that activity, or we do something in hoping that in the future, there will be some gain based on that activity, either immediate or extended. And this is called fruit of activities. And this is how material world works. And it's mostly situated purely in the mode of passion. And so the material world is meant to keep the living entity away from uh, fulfilling their real desires for happiness. And therefore, these desires are what we say, um, like demons in the sense that they block or they interfere, or they try to disrupt our natural proclivities to love and serve the Lord. So to use the word demon-like desires for fruit of activity is very appropriate. And who can, who can vanquish that? And as Prabhupada says in this particular purport here, um, the, although the non-devotees may to, try to stop the waves of material desire, they can't do so. They have no power. Only when one brings in the power of the Lord or the presence of the Lord is one equipped with that mercy, with that power to drive away by the mercy of the Lord, those demoniac desires. Because the living entity is subordinate, although superior to the material energy is subordinate to the power of the 
material energy. Material energy is more, seems to act more powerful than the living entity. And that is because we have surrendered to the material energy. Because we've surrendered to the material energy, material energy controls us. When we don't surrender to the material energy, when we surrender to Krishna, then the material energy cannot control us. <laughs> because Krishna is the controller of the material energy. He's both the creator and director and what we say destroyer of the material energy. So therefore here, Lord Nisringadeva, when Prahlad Maharaj is using his own personal example, we can see how uh, Rani Kashipu tried in so many ways to uh, dissuade his son from worshiping the Lord. First, he tried to do it through reason and argument. When that failed, he put him under the care of the teachers of the, we call it Asura Kula, not Guru Kula, but Asura Kula, the uh, place where Asuras get trained up. <laughs> And uh, his teachers, Skanda and Amarka, Sanda and Amarka, were uh, uh, encouraged by uh, Harani Kashipu to, uh, what we say, indoctrinate his son, Prahlad, into the ways of, a, of demoniac thinking. But Prahlad Maharaj was not, what we say, at all fearful of them, nor did he acquiesce to them. He remained fixed on his devotion to Krishna. And he was always at the same time, not only trying to hide from his perpetrators, or you might say his harassers, those who were harassing him, but he was also preaching to them. <laughs> He preached to his schoolmates, he also preached to his teachers, he preached to his father, which caused them all to become more angry, <laughs> but he did it. And uh, when he when finally, when his father realized that nothing is going to work, he called his son a, um, what did he call it? A uh, disturbance in in the in the body so using the analogy of the family as being the body he was the father and Prahlad was the son so it says that if you if there is some disease in the body you have to get rid of the disease in order for the body to regain its natural health so uh, Harani Kasipu using that analogy threatened his son that hey, actually you're a disease <laughs> to our whole family dynasty. Therefore, in order to protect it, we have to eliminate you. So he wasn't at all uh, remorseful about the idea of killing his son. And this is an interesting point. We can understand that. Um, Prabhupada said the demons, real demons, I mean, people who may act a little demonically at, at times, but real demons, the full-fledged, you know, demons, they will do anything to satisfy their senses, even kill their own family members. It doesn't matter as long as they can fulfill their own desires. And Prabhupada has said that a few times. And uh, he gives the example of, you know, Arunzab, when Arunza, Arunza wanted to rule the kingdom, he killed his brothers and he imprisoned his father in a jail in Delhi, in the area of Delhi. Um, yeah, and so uh, that's an example that Prabhupada would use to show us that the demons will do anything to fulfill their own desires. So this is a, a characteristics of the demons. And so we should also take note that that still is present today in those who are actually demoniac. 
as Prabhupada said, there are two classes of people, not Prabhupada, I'm sorry, as the scriptures say, there are two, cre two types of created beings, the demons and the, dev and the demigods. So there are always demons. You can't get rid of them. They're always around. <laughs> they exist. And they just cause trouble to everyone. That's their business, to cause trouble to others, to harass others, to exploit others, to control others, to kill others. That's the program of the demons. <laughs> And to amass as many as much material wealth and material amenities as they can do. And they're never satisfied with how much they get. So you can see that in the life of Ravi Kashipu. He was so powerful. He had subjugated all the demons, I mean, all the demigods, all the way up. The only ones he didn't subjugate was Brahma, Shiva, and Narada Rish. These are the three. He wasn't able to subjugate, but they didn't give him any trouble. At the same time, he wasn't able to subjugate them. But he had all the other demigods in total fear. He was so powerful and said that even if he raised his eyebrows in an awkward way, the demigods would become more fearful. This is how powerful he was. And... Uh, so that's power. I mean, you can't find demons today who are that powerful, as Prabhupada says. The devotees today and the demons today are not as powerful as the devotees and the demons they were years ago because the quality of the age has diminished the power in all categories of, the li of life. <laughs> So the demons exist today, but they're not as powerful as they were, but still they cause trouble. And the Harani Kashipu, although he had everything, <laughs> I mean, there wasn't anything he didn't have in terms of possession, power, wealth, so, so many things, still he wasn't happy. And, and Prahlad Maharaj, who loved his father, although his father was a demon, he would address his father, Asurya Bhajya, which means, oh, oh dear father, you are the best of all demons. <laughs> he would somewhat, you know, in a facetious way, glorify his father, calling him the best of the demons. And he wasn't afraid. And this is, uh, this is what the Prabhupada says here. And this is where Pallad Maharaj ends the purport also. He says, by, if you appear in our hearts, then all the ignorance is driven away. And by your mercy, we, we can become fearless in the struggle for existence in this material world. So the demons work on the principles of fear. Like today, they're trying to create fears through lying and cheating propaganda, which threatens people's existence. And that's, that's how they work. If they can make you fear, fearful, then they can control you. But if you're not fearful, they can't control you. Therefore, the devotee can become fearless when they uh, take shelter of the Supreme Lord in devotion. So if we go down to the very end of the purport, I think that's what is being concluded here. It says, any devotee aspiring to be free from material desires should offer his respectful obeisances to Nusringadeva as Prahlad Maharaj did in this verse. Um, so just a side note that devotees should chant this verse regularly because it's such a beautiful verse when chanted according to the meter that it is written in. It gives enthusiasm, it gives strength, it gives fearlessness as we simply chant this verse spoken by Prahlad Maharaj. It has great, great power because it's the power of the pure devotee and it's the power of the Lord is invested in, this, in these beautiful mantras that we can chant with the desire to achieve the mercy of the Lord. So fearlessness is one of the uh, outstanding qualities of the Vaishnavas. Um, 
Prabhupada says, devotees don't have any fear, but they do have one fear. He says, it's a healthy fear, and it's a fear that we should keep. He said, the fear of, again, being trapped by the material energy. Um, there's always a possibility that if one is not uh, careful in the execution of their devotional service, they may again slip into past bad habits, past wrong association, or just start to again look at the material energy as some resource for fulfilling our desires for happiness. So Prabhupada said, yes, this is the fear that we should cultivate, the fear of, of falling back into material life. <clears throat> but outside of that, the devotees have no fear. But fearlessness doesn't mean uh, carelessness. <laughs> Sometimes the macho, uh, we use the word macho, uh, a definition of fearlessness is to exhibit one's uh, arrogance in the face of everything that comes their way. That's not fearlessness. That's more like foolishness <laughs> because the material energy is very powerful <coughs> and one cannot flaunt the material energy, but one should take shelter of Krishna and act according to his will. And then one will always be in the position to receive the full mercy of the Lord. And full mercy means full protection, not just partial protection, but full protection. So Prahlad Maharaj, as we read in the Srimad Bhagavatam, what he had to go through in order to uh, stay fixed on the Supreme Lord, I mean, he had to undergo so much harassment by his father through his father's uh, uh, servants, the demons, where he was attempted to be stabbed by sharp objects. He was attempted to be killed by being thrown in a pit of snakes. He was administered poison. He was uh, trying to, they tried to destroy him through chanting uh, demoniac mantras. His father took him and arranged for the demons to throw him off a cliff. When that didn't work, they threw him in, an, in the ocean and they, there was a mountain that was thrown on top of him. But none of these things were able to even scratch a hair on the head of Prahlad Maharaj because Krishna is the supreme power of all power. And if he wants to protect someone, no one can do anything. And if he wants to re give, give away his protection to someone, that person cannot find protection from anywhere. As the verse goes, Rake Krishna Mori Ke, Mori, Mori Krishna Rake Ke. If Krishna wants to save, no one, no how, in any circumstance can can hurt that person. And if Krishna doesn't, then that person is, has no protection anywhere. <laughs> so this is, the, this is the understanding of this particular verse uh, that Prahlad Maharaj has full faith in the Lord. But what he's mostly afraid of, and he explains it here in this verse, is that please enter into our hearts and with your nails, which are very powerful, and with your teeth, Raja Dhamstra, Raja, Raja Naka, Raja Dhamstra, nails and teeth, teeth, which are compared to thunderbolts. When we hear the comparison to weapons that are in creation, uh, Indra's thunderbolt is considered to be one of the most powerful weapons in creation. A thunderbolt is so powerful, we call it, sometimes we call it a lightning bolt, but the actual name is thunderbolt. If, when it crashes against a mountain, it can obliterate, obliterate a mountain. 
sometimes these things come real close to the earth and burn a house into ashes within a few minutes <laughs> or destroy, destroy something instantly. So it's a very powerful, powerful weapon. And so therefore he compares the, the nails and teeth of uh, Nusringadev who had to these two forms of <laughs> protection, his nails and his teeth. And he has, as Prahlad is saying, please uproot these desires for food of activities. Food of activities bind one to the cycle of birth and death and never give one any satisfaction. And then of course, the Lord will always protect his devotee and he also destroys material illusions conjured up by material energy. There were demons years ago that could create illusions that were that look like the reality just like in the fight between lord bor and haranyaksha he created all these illusions when indrajit was fighting against uh, uh, lakshman he created all these illusions and he disappeared. And from these illusions, all his weapons were being fired and no one could, no one could see where he was. Mm -hmm. And we also have the example of um, Dhruva Maharaj when he was fighting against the Yakshas. Mm -hmm. That particular pastime, there's a very vivid description of all the illusions created by the Yakshas, which are, well, they were kind of like mystic uh, demons. They were demons that were mystical. They were the, actually they were the sons or the progeny or the family of Kuvera, the uh, treasure of the demigods. They worked under his care, but they were rascals. <laughs> and uh, when Juba Maharaj was fighting against them, the illusions they threw at him were quite <laughs> vivid. You can actually see some of the drawings that were done to show these illusions and how they appeared to Dhruva Maharaj, but he wasn't at all uh, disturbed by them. He simply fired his arrows into the illusions, destroying the, the illusions. So demons can do that. They can create illusions. Some of them, some of them have that power, others, simply try to destroy people by legislation, political legislation, social difficulties, social rules and regulations, and mostly by lying propaganda. The demons are the greatest liars ever. <laughs> They're so, not only are they liars, but they can create a series of lies that sounds like it's something that's beneficial for you and for everyone. They are expert at creating propaganda. Prabhupada says the demons are very materially intelligent. They study them how to, how to manipulate the material energy. And because they have practiced that for many, many lives in their bodies as demons, they become very, what we say, versatile in le learning how to manipulate the material energy and to use it against anyone they want to use it against. And their number one weapon is lying propaganda. <laughs> and so, you know, Rani Kashipu was the same way. So he was the personification of arrogance. And this is one of the characteristics of the demons. They are so arrogant because they have position, because they have power, because they have some control, because they have wealth, they become arrogant and do not consider anyone else's ideas or opinions except their own. That, that is a demon. But Prahlad Maharaj, he's teaching us here that 
Shri Nishringa, Jai Nishringa, Jai Jai Shri Nishringa. Bahir Nishingo Vidaye Nishingo. What is that? Uh, what is that verse? Palada Desha Jaya Padma Mukha Padma. No, no, let's see. Uh, uh, Jai Narsimha, Sri Narsimha, Jai 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 Sri Narsimha. No, no the, uh, the prayer Ugram we sing Biram, every morning. Ugram Biram Mahavishnam Chalantam Sarvatam. No, the prayer we sing every day in, in the, at the end of the Artis. Um, Namaste Narsimha. Namaste Narsimha. Yeah. yeah. Namaste Narasring Haya Palad Alad Adayane Hiranya Kashi Pu Vakshaha Srila Tamkam Nakamaya Ito Nishingo Padato Nishingo Yato Yato Yamita To Nishingo There's the word Yato Yato Yamita To Nishingo Wherever I go, wherever I go, Lord Nishringa Dev goes with me. So he is always with his devotee. Uh, he is in the heart and he is everywhere within the existence. So the devotees uh, take shelter of the Lord in his form as the protective element of, of the Supreme Personality of God. And of course, the, the protection element exists in all manifestations of the Godhead as we were discussing that yesterday. But particularly is Nishringa Dave has that service. <laughs> he likes to kill demons. He likes to protect his devotees. And he especially likes when his devotees take shelter of him and seek his protection. So we can learn a lot from Prahlad Maharaj. He's teaching us. He was. Prabhupada really loved Prahlad Maharaj very much. He expressed that so many times in his lectures. Five-year-old boy, but fully, fully self-realized in God consciousness, completely fearless, preaching the message of, of Sanatan Dharma, eternal religious principles to people who were, he, he did it because he had some natural affection for them concern for them, but still they were persons who could never really change or understand. But Prahlad Maharaj was preparing his father for his father to meet the ultimate principle of truth. And that was Lord Vishringadev who destroyed this demon so material desires, and as they increase in size and in capacity, uh, become more and more in the category of demoniacs. So therefore, it's understandable that in the practice of spiritual life, one should be like a gardener who is cultivating the garden of devotion and part of that cultivation is to remove those objects within the garden, which will hinder the growth of the garden, which are the weeds. Mm -hmm. So material desires are like weeds that need to be uprooted and thrown out of the garden of our devotion to, to the Supreme Lord in order for the garden to flourish and to bring forth beautiful fruits and flowers, which are the, uh, which are the examples of our love of God for Krishna. So the point is that material desires are not something we have to allow to stay in our life. We, they have to be pushed out, otherwise they will grow and become stronger and stronger and stronger. And therefore, devotee is always diligent to see and to recognize what are those things that are blocking my path in devotional service. And using this prayer, chanting this prayer spoken by Prahlad Maharaj, one can achieve the success of uprooting material desires which are like demons. Okay, so we'll stop here and see if there's any questions or comments.
Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, uh, thank you so much for enlightening us this on this uh, uh, verse and uh, telling us the importance of uh, the material desires, how to get rid of them and um, um, be in the mode of goodness. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, I request devotees, uh, if they have any questions or comments or realizations, they can share. Vivek Prabhu, you have a question? Yeah, thanks, Mataji. Uh, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Guru Maharaj, this uh, pastime of Prahlad Maharaj, uh, as you mentioned that he uh, was self-realized soul and very, very highly elevated. So whenever I hear this pastime, I always have one confusion in my mind and it might be a bit odd. Uh, like, like whenever any obstacles came in Prahlad Maharaj's life, he just had complete surrender and faith on Krishna. I, I get a bit confused that like in our material life, whenever any problem comes, uh, in terms of taking action versus having complete faith on Krishna, uh, how to balance that? Like I get like confused that should I have complete like if some challenges coming, I should I like leave it to Krishna and like okay fine Krishna is, has given this situation and he is going to manage it, or sometimes like where to take our action and where to leave it to Krishna? Sorry, Guru Maharaj. Well, to distinguish Krishna. between when to act and how to act, and to simply to depend on Krishna really means two levels of bhakti. The devotees on the highest level of bhakti or on the more advanced levels of bhakti will always depend on Krishna in all situations as we see in Prahlad Maharaj. But that may not be practical or possible in terms of how to respond to a situation for devotees who are on a lesser level where we make some effort to what we say, accept and deal with the situation, but, but the acknowledgement or the consciousness is that we depend on Krishna, although we make our own efforts. So our efforts are really situated on the mercy of Krishna and not simply our own efforts independent of that. So that connection between our endeavor to respond to a situation and Krishna's mercy have to be amalgamated into one. Where we, where we don't make a distinction between our efforts to respond to a situation and Krishna's mercy, which will make the difference on how, what will be the results. Prahlad Maharaj didn't make any efforts to protect himself. <laughs> but we can't say that we can be, we can imitate Prahlad on that level. And Prabhupada speaks about this in relationship to different levels of devotees. Sometimes we hear the example of how Srivasta Kaur, he didn't do any kind of activities to maintain his family. And he had a big family, extended family, many brothers with wives and children also. They all lived together, but nobody worked because they all depended on Krishna. They were all engaged in devotional service. The Praladma, I mean, uh, Srivastha Kaur, when asked by Lord Chaitanya, you know, how do you maintain yourself? How do you maintain your family? He simply responded, you know, that if Krishna doesn't take care of me, then, you know, then uh, I drown myself in the Ganges. So he had complete faith. 
that by serving the Lord, the Lord would provide everything he needed to live. In. Now there's others, when we speak this story, we say, unless you have that faith, don't try to act on that level, but try to develop that faith at the same time. So in our case, I think it's using your intelligence, how to respond to a situation, but uh, depending on Krishna's mercy and depending on Krishna to give you the intelligence and the understanding of how, understanding of what's happening and the intelligence on how to, to ameliorate it, to correct the situation. Sometimes we use a little cliche in order, we said we have to act like it depends on us and we have to know it doesn't. We have to act like it depends on us and we have to know it doesn't. So balancing these two apparent opposites. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. That's quite helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Um, there is a uh, comment and a question um, by Dheeraj Prabhu. He wrote on chat. Um, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, Dandavat Pranam. Sometime when we desire something about Krishna consciousness, like I desired to prepare a Rajbhog offering in Janmashtami last year, although I was not well, but I did prepare 43 items all alone. I was too surprised. But in material life, these things never happen. Is that our consciousness is not pure at that time? Your servant Dheeraj. Mm -hmm. Well, when we act in material life, we don't have the uh, support of the Lord. But when you're serving the Lord, then you have the mercy of the Lord along with your efforts in devotional service. The Lord, the Lord it gives the intelligence, as he says, I give the intelligence on how to approach me, how to serve me. But when you act in material life, you, you depend on your own uh, acquired intelligence, abilities, past experiences. So therefore, we can never uh, be sure of how things will turn out in material life. But we can always be sure that by serving Krishna in any situation, it'll always be, it'll always be beneficial. Service to Krishna is not under the influence of the of the external material energy, which gives different results according to the nature of the participant. <laughs> Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Diraj. Does that make sense? Hare Krishna. Okay. Anybody have... else have any more questions? Or... Um, so, Guru Maharaj, uh, I just want to ask you a follow-up question on this answer um, you just gave to Dheeraj, Dheeraj Prabhu. So, um, can't we depend on Krishna when we are doing any material things also, Guru Maharaj? Um, like, um, uh, can, we, uh, can we depend on Krishna like when we are supposed to um, doing any other material activities like working somewhere or in our jobs or in our... If you're seeing your external activities, which are in relationship to family maintenance or personal maintenance, personal needs, as service to Krishna, 
then you're you're getting the the element of Krishna's mercy involved. If you see them separately and you try to act on them in that same way, then Krishna is going to fulfill your desire, and your desire is based on your consciousness. So if, if we are a devotional family and the, we have to go to work in order to main us, maintain our family, so we need to, in order for us to have what we need to practice Krishna consciousness nicely. In other words, if our main goal in life is Krishna consciousness, then these subsidiary activities, which put us in contact with the external energy, which are connected to our maintenance or our material needs, are actually in one sense parallel to bhakti. So yes, you can depend on Krishna, but your material success and failure is not your success and failure. <laughs> you, could, you could achieve something materially and that could be your failure spiritually and you could fail in something materially and that could be your success spiritually. So that's why the material energy is not a, what we say, a barometer to understand how Krishna's energy and Krishna's mercy works because it works in different ways to help us in our spiritual life. So Krishna may use the material energy in different ways to move us forward or to uh, correct us. <laughs> mm -hmm. You will see, you'll see the Manan devotees who have some religious sentiment, they pray to God for their material success. And a lot of times when the material success does not happen, they go away. Prabhupada would use the example in World War II, when the war was going on, the, uh, the mothers, the sisters, the wives of the soldiers would go to the tent temples and churches and pray for their sons, their brothers, their husbands to come back. And when they didn't come back from the war, they gave up God. <laughs> Um, so their dependence on God or their prayer to God was fruitive and expecting God to fulfill their material desires. But he's, he will fulfill your material desire if it helps you in your Krishna consciousness. If, if it doesn't, then he may not fulfill that material desire. Okay, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, we have to be careful in that way. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Like I've seen people say, well, I want to get this particular job and really work hard so I can give more money to Krishna. But really, it's not about Krishna. It's about getting that money. That's all. <laughs> and so they say, well, I'm going to give one. Krishna doesn't need your money anyway. So people use excuses as ways to and take on material activities, saying that this is for Krishna, but it may not be for Krishna. <laughs> or maybe something in there that's very fruitive, which is usually the case. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, any devotees have more questions uh, or comments? I guess no more questions, Guru Maharaj. Okay, so we can conclude from here. I think tomorrow. Hare Krishna, is Guru Maharaj. We accept my humble obeisances. Glory to Shri Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, Mother Anuradha. Hare Krishna. 
Um, I was thinking like Pralad Maharaj, um, he was um, uh, taking shelter of Rotus feet of Lord Nishimhadev by being tortured by uh, his father Hiranya Kashipu. And in the same way also Haridas Thakur um, took shelter of holy name and he spread all over where, wherever he was. And he have so many enemies also, but because he takes shelter of the holy name of the Lord, he was saved by the holy name, by, by Krishna's mercy. He was always protected by the holy name. It, it's the mm -hmm. same as Prahlad Maharaj. Yeah, because Chris Prabhupada says in this age, the Lord has come in the form of his holy name. And his holy name is Binna Tvam Nami Nami No, it's not different than him. So taking shelter of Krishna's holy name makes taking shelter of Krishna. So this is the, as Prabhupada said, this is the incarnation in this age. He has appeared in sound. So that's correct. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, nice point. Thank you. Yeah, Krishna's holy name is non different from them. The verse is Krishna. Uh, what is that verse? Uh, Krishna. Krishna uh, let me think. <coughs> Oh, what is that verse? Nama Chintamini Krishna's yeah. Chaitanya Rasavigraha. Purna Shuddha Nitya Mukto Abhinatvam Nama Namino. Abhinna. Abhinna abhin, abhin, means the same and Abhinna I mean, Binna means different and Abhinna means non different. So Abhinna Twam Nami Nami No. Nam and Nami are mentioned. One is the name and he who is named. So out of the two, he who is named and the name, of course, they're non-different, but the name is even more merciful than he who is named. So this is the manifestation of the Lord's shelter in this age is his holy name, along with the process of pure devotional practice. <laughs> Chant Hare Krishna. Sometimes we just we just glibly go along and we think, oh, yeah, chanting Hare Krishna. We really don't uh, carefully understand how powerful chanting Hare Krishna is, particularly when that when we chant without offense, then it is very very powerful. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah. Leela Manjari. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. My humble obeisance is to you. I'm going to chastise you. Yes, Maharaj. Can I? Yes. Where's Where's my daily drop of nectar? that I'm supposed to, you know, get revived from. You are my, you are the, the fountain of spiritual uh, nectar that, I'm, that I drink every morning, but now the fountain is not running. It's... Yes, Maharaj. <laughs> I, I will send you. And believe me, you're not sending it just to me. You're sending it to many. <laughs> Yes, Maharaj. And you'd be surprised after I send it out to other devotees. Oh, I get all these things. They, they thank me. But it all actually, it all goes to you. I just push a button. That's it. Maharaj, we have a special guest here today. Shirupa is also here. 
Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please oh, accept no. my condolences. <laughs> Shri Rupa, how, how's the family? <laughs> They're all doing well, Maharaj. Thank you. <laughs> if, I, if I was with you, you know what I would do. You know what yeah. I would do. <laughs> but now you're so big that I can't hold it high enough, so I don't know how to do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Hare Krishna. It was so nice to see you. How's your sister? How's the sisters? They they're doing good. <laughs> good, good. All three are married now. Uh, no, not yet. My youngest sister is not married yet. Yeah, she's a she's like a like a what's a like a yogi or something. <laughs> <laughs> she's a very interesting personality. <laughs> Yeah, we're hoping she'll get married soon. <laughs> She's so next. nice. She's such a, yeah, she's a very st strong devotee. Yeah, she's definitely. And your mother? And she's your mother? doing well. She She's doing well. Both my mother and father just got initiated uh, last December, January, this January, I think. They got initiated? Yes. <laughs> What's their names now? So my father is Ananga Mohan Das, and my mother is Preeti Lakshana Devi Dasi. Preeti Lakshana Devi Dasi. Wow. I never thought they were never initiated. They always... <laughs> <laughs> but now I realize that... Hmm. You know, they needed... A, they took that step. That was nice. Yes. <laughs> But it was because of you guys they got initiated. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, really, because because you 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 and your sisters are also Krishna conscious, and so they thought, well, we have to include the rest of the family. <laughs> Thanks to devotees like you, Maharaj, you really cultivated us in our early days. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I think. When I first met you, how old were you? Like eight years old or something? Yeah, possibly. <laughs> maybe eight, maybe ten or something mm. like that. Mm. I think it was so nice to see you and I, I wish you the best. I hope everything works out for you. Thank you. Thank you, Marge. Yeah. Good to yeah. see you too. Yeah, my prayers and best wishes to everyone. This, Thank you. This, Tell your father and mother congratulations on my behalf. I'll tell them. <laughs> Thank you Thank so you. much. Hare Krishna. Hare Thank, Krishna. You. Thank you, Leela Manjari. Yes, Maharaj. Yeah. Actually, um, my sister gave birth to a baby. So like my schedule is like a little bit here and there, just adjusting to the new mother and the uh -huh. baby. All right, so I'll have to be patient. <laughs> but I still am eager because if it doesn't come before I chant my japa, I turn my phone off. <laughs> and I, I use it. And so if you can send it before 8.30 in the evening, your time, that would be perfect. Yes, Maharaj. Yeah. Yes, Maharaj means what? Yeah, that it means I will do it. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, and my my uh, gratefulness for you to for you because you're serving so nicely. There's no better service than reminding us about the importance of chanting the holy names by quoting Shiva Brown. Yes, my head. Yeah. So all the devotees now that are getting it, they don't know it's coming from you because I never tell them. Now they're hearing it, so. Yeah, it's it's coming from Prabhupada. Yeah, he can he can <laughs> say things so nicely. It's very inspiring. Yeah, it's straight to the point. And some of the one, some of those are really, really directly speaking to what we need to hear. 
Thank you. And someday I will, if Krishna lets me, I'll visit that place called, what is it called? Chicago? I think that's the name. <laughs> Maharaj, if you ho hold one second, I will show you my little nephew. His name is Hari Charan. Oh no, okay. Oh, he's got a beautiful birthmark. <laughs> no, Maharaj, he, um, we, just, we just put it, yeah. <laughs> this is uh, Premarasa and Madhumangal Prabhu's baby. Please give him your blessings, Maharaj. Madhu Mangal. What? Madhu Mangal? Yeah. Oh, no. They, he's going to be another coward boy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his, his, um, my nephew's name is um, Hari Charan. 